So the motor I have is a 12 volt 10 RPM DC motor that's mounted from the bottom using this uh, copper strip. I did route out a uh, small pocket hole because I wanted the motor to be completely invisible from above. Uh, gets its power in from the DC inlet here uh, with a little simple toggle switch to power it on and off. Again, this is routed out. Uh, because the motor sticks out below the baseboard, I had to put on these feet in order for the baseboard to stay flat. And as you can see, the motor is completely invisible from the top. And it's just the center axis that um, pokes through a very small hole in the, in the baseboard uh, because that is the look that I was going for. One of the reasons I wanted it to, to, to look so sleek is because I wanted a maximum height of ball lift and I wanted the balls to be really low down on the baseboard when they got collected up. Now the biggest mistake I made was to make the ball run into the ball lift too low too soon. So all the way from here to here, it's not a very big drop. So the speed of the ball here is actually very slow. And what can often happen is when a ball arrives in here, it bounces back out and can sometimes even rest in this position and the motorized lift doesn't pick up the ball. So I'll now show you my workbench and um, some of the tooling that I use. Uh, first of all, the copper I'm using is two millimeter for the uprights and the supports, and 1.6 millimeter for the track and um, the track spacers. Track spacers are, you, are made by uh, wrapping around a nine millimeter bar to make circles, and then um, cut in half to make these semicircles. You can obviously wrap the copper around anything to make um, different diameters of copper. I've got a scrap spin of 1.6 mm, uh, and 2 millimeters, and anything that I've prepared basically I stick in here so I get nice long uh, raw material ready to go. And uh, this is my pot of, of uh, track spaces because you need, you need those all the time. The, some of the hinges I'm making for the tippy tables are made out of a tube and um, these have got uh, a 2mm hole, 3mm hole, 4mm hole and so the 2mm fits in the 3 and the 3 fits in the 4 so you can get these nice um, rotating uh, axes. This is the prototype of the prototype for the um, ball lift that I made. Um, it's not particularly central and this one is quite it's quite bendy uh, so I didn't use it uh, because the whole thing is made of 1.6 and it's made by wrapping the, um, the copper around, uh, around a piece of bar uh, with paper lines drawn on in order to keep the spacing nice and level. Again there's a scrap spin so if I need a small piece of anything then um, I can get it out of there. The ball diameters I'm using are uh, half inch or 12.7 millimeters. I'm using stainless steel. They're not very heavy. I started off using proper steel, um, but they rusted really quickly and they were heavier. And then when I transferred to the stainless steel ones, I found that the, the balls didn't go so fast. And so I had to adjust everything. So whatever you're using, make sure you, you stick to it. Lots of clamps are needed to hold everything in place whilst you're soldering. Um, these are really old uh, solder fingers, um, they're a bit wobbly and they fall over and they're not very good so I've recently upgraded to um, this chunk of metal with, um, with a nice adjustable flexible arm and a clamp on the top. I've even screwed um, some of these clamps to, uh, to bits of wood. Um, but these are really useful, um, you need loads of these. Cardboard is very good, so you can um, you can mark on a piece of cardboard um, two lines where you want your track to be. I'm using nine millimeter spacing, and you can then clamp the the copper onto the cardboard um, in the right place before you before you do the soldering. 
You can choose to use these little squares. I've made some nine millimeter squares um, out of MDF, uh, which is very handy for, for getting the size right. You can also use nine millimeter MDF like this, or even the, the nine millimeter um, bar that I used to do the to do the winding with. I've also made these circles. These are again three millimeter MDF. Um, and I've made them every nine millimeters. So if you if you put two together that are 18 millimeters apart, then you get a track spacing here and a track spacing here of nine millimeters. So you can bend the outside track around um, the big one and the inside around the small one, and you get a nice automatic nine millimeter um, curved track all the way around. Also designed and made these um, ellipses. Um, so 6345, 9072, basically using all the all the nine times tables. I've got fat ellipses and thin ellipses. Um, I haven't actually used these very much. I, I've started to, to basically not use ellipses, um, just go for the the 90 degree bends or, or the um, the circular bends. Uh, these are really useful. Very long supports. Again, they're nine millimeters wide. You can clamp these into um, into stands like this, um, do things like um, hold up various bits of track in position whilst you're soldering, and then lots of snips, um, bending tools. Um, I've got some flat, grippy pliers. These are very useful round pliers with um, no serrations on them. So this is for doing nice, nice, accurate bends. I use these all the time. And these are these are what I use for soldering. So the angled, fingered, um, sprung-loaded pliers. So I hold the I hold the track spacing in place uh, like this in order to to do the soldering. And some very strong snips here that are um, really good for cutting everything, um, like the the two mil and even the the tube. But you do bend the tube. Uh, I have got a Dremel that I use um, for sanding or polishing and, and cutting fine stuff. Solder one iron I use has got a flexible temperature, uh, adjustable temperature, uh, but basically I have it on max the whole time and I use a pretty large flat iron um, tip. Um, I keep it clean a lot and um, solder I use is this stuff here, um, SNCU 0.7, uh, diameter 0.8, uh, lead free, and I highly recommend good flux uh, in order to get anything to wet. Uh, this stuff is pretty good, S39 Universal by Griffin, and I basically um, pour a little bit of this into the cap and uh, paint it on uh, with a brush just before I solder. I've also got my three drills that I need. Uh, so that's a 1.5. So that's for sticking 1.6 millimeter um, wire into a 1.5 hole. So it's a press fit. That's a 1.9 mil. That's good for two millimeters. And I think that's 2.9, so just under three. So each one of these I can drill into the wood and then um, push, the, push the wire into the wood. And once I've finished, I need to. I, I like to have the copper all nice and clean. So I've just started to use this stuff, which is Everbright HD Gel. I've got a bit of that in a jar here. So I paint this on. It's a bit like a solder deflux. So this is good for cleaning up the solder joints and stopping them from um, going dull and uh, full of patina or, or copper rust, if you like. Uh, but lots of people have told me that uh, just simple washing up liquid in water. Um, and I'm putting it on with a toothbrush and then wiping it clean with a uh, wiping each solder joint clean as well. So I might do an hour of soldering and then 10 minutes of cleaning up. And since I've started to do this process, uh, everything is staying nice and shiny as it should be. And then once you finish the model, uh, again, somebody recommended this Prep 505, which is a preparation fluid, which is really good for cleaning the copper. And then I'm wiping this on um, again using a, using a cloth. This is Everbright Protector Coat Clear, and this is like a uh, lacquer that will go onto the copper and hopefully keep it nice and shiny over time and 
stop it from going rusty. And I'm using lots and lots and lots of wire wool, um, so I rip a bit of this off and do all my uh, cleaning before soldering and after soldering using the wire wool, so I'm getting through this a lot. Um, I did invest in some, uh, some pads and I've used all sorts of um, all sorts of things. I've got all these Dremel um, attachments, some of which I've used to get into small difficult areas. Um, but most of the time I find I can get in with the wool. If I can't quite get in with the wool, then I put a bit of wool on the end of this and if you can get in and solder, you can get in and clean. There you go. That's where I do my work. So, thanks for watching.